Right, yes. What's the matter, lad? Daddy says I shouldn't talk to strangers. Oh, well, you know me, Simbad. I might be strange, but I'm not a stranger. Have you been crying? I'm locked out of the house. Well, where is everybody? Gone. Everybody? Everybody I want to see. Ah, well, don't do that. You'll get me at it. I want my granddad. Oh, the book. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, don't cry, Sinbad. All right, I won't. I'll take you to go and see him. Come on. Big trouble in Little China. I do not understand why you're here, Jessica. Neither do I. Just found a crying on the clothes, you know, said she wanted to go see her granddaddy and that. So I didn't have any choice, really, did I? But what is my son thinking of, letting his daughter out on the street on her own? Oh, well, I don't know. I used to see it a lot when I was a kid. You know, outside the alehouses and that. Not Chinese children. Daddy was talking to Alison on the telephone. Then I shall talk to my son on the telephone also. Hey, you know what they say about Chinese food, don't you? Many things. Most of them untrue. Oh. Well, there. Uh, I'll get off then, shall I? Please sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I owe you hospitality for bringing my granddaughter here. Oh, eh. Uh, oh, sir, very much. What the hell's going on? Where's Jess? We well, you know, she's just got the bug. I see you finally managed to organize your domestic arrangements. What's he doing here? I'm feeding me face. Well, fair's fair. I did bring it to see her granddad. You brought it here? I've told her never, never to go anywhere without telling me. The things that parents tell their children are seldom heeded, Michael. Chinese wisdom, though. Hey, hey, what's that prone thing? Look, Dad, like I don't know what now. game you're playing. It's called listening to the child. I have listened to my granddaughter, and she has told me some very interesting things. Oh, really? Yes, really. Sit down, Michael. We have some talking to do, the three of us. Couldn't we do this somewhere more private? Oh, you're all right, I've already heard it. So, you see, Michael, everybody in this room knows the cause of your daughter's unhappiness. Everybody except you. And yourself, Dad. Because I'm a selfish old man who is about to lose the rest of his family and happily takes the chance to spend a little time with his granddaughter. You haven't lost Caroline. She's not dead, and we're very much alive. At my age, long separation is not much different to death. Eh, uh, has Caroline gone somewhere? I didn't realize that Jess was having such a problem adjusting to Hattie. How could I? The same way I found out, by asking and listening. Excuse me, I think you've done enough harm already. He should have taken her back to the house, but then he gave her attention when she needed it. And yours was obviously elsewhere. But don't you have any other way of communicating with me apart from constantly manipulating my guilt? No shout to my granddad. Do you have any other way to talk to me that is not aggressive? Come here, Jess. I'm sorry. I was worried about you. Look, I'm sorry, Dad. There's just so much happening at the moment. And you are not alone in your life either. You do have a father. Ah. Uh. Sometimes you keep telling me I don't have a father, especially when I do things you don't approve of. I try to prevent the wrong things happening in my children's lives. I realize that Jess had disappeared, eh? Had a taste of what it must feel like to lose your family? <laughs> I hope you enjoy your meal. Uh, yeah, it was all right, yeah. Hey, listen about Caroline. Where is she? Oh, is this her address? Your bill. Ah, oh, there. And what's this king prawns? It was only scampy.